At the end of the day, Zaki is going to be chaired by BP Shiba Joe, and NPC gets not to construct 21 roads across the country. And tonight, we'll focus on the number of governorship elections yet again as we bring you more candidates on their manifestos and campaign promises. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquim Ale, a Channels Television's office here in Abuja, in the nation's capital. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Let's begin by telling you that the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, presided over today's Federal Executive Council meeting as President Muhammad Obuari is away from the country, is away in Saudi Arabia on an investment summit. The Council approved today the construction of 21 roads covering a total distance of 1,804 kilometers across the six geopolitical zones. These projects are to be undertaken by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, through the deployment of its own tax liabilities. The Minister of Works and Housing, Batane Fashala, announced the approval after the meeting while briefing State House correspondent. Take a listen to the details of that approval. Ministerial Mandate 3, if you recall, was energy sufficiency in electric power and petroleum energy distribution across the country. A petroleum energy distribution is being impacted positively and negatively, as the case may be, by the transport infrastructure, which is Ministerial Mandate 4. So NMPC has sought and council has approved today that NMPC deploy tax resources to 21 routes um, covering a total distance of 1,804.6 kilometers across the six geopolitical zones. Out of those 21 routes, nine are in North Central, particularly Niger State. And the reason is that Niger State is a major storage center for NMPC. So the reason NMPC is doing this is to facilitate petroleum distribution across the country. Uh, there you have it, the details of the approval and what it means, the reason why NNPC is taking it up. Before we get into our conversation tonight, let's also tell you that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is making efforts in ensuring there's a free, fair, and credible election in Anambra State. We can tell you that the Anambra governorship election is now about 11 days away and anxiety is in the air about the conduct and security of the elections. So today, the Joint Senate and the House of Reps Committee on INEC met with the INEC Chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and heads of security agencies to discuss the level of preparedness for the Anambra governorship election. The Anambra Senate, uh, the Chairman, Senate Committee on INEC, Senator Kabiru Gaya says, the meeting is necessary because of the security situation in Anambra State and its effect on the election. He says, ahead of the election, ANEC has increased the polling units in Anambra State from 4,608 to 5,720 to allow better accessibility by the electorate. And a chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, assures the committee that the commission is prepared for the Anambra State governorship election. <laughs> INEC is ready for the Anambra governorship election in the next 10 days. That is on Saturday, 6 November 2021. When we release the timetable for the election on the 19th of January this year, we identified 14 activities that had to be accomplished leading to the election, from the publication of notice to election day. And as of today, we have successfully accomplished 12 out of the 14 activities on schedule. The only outstanding activities are the last day of campaign by political parties, which is going to be in the next eight days, 24 hours of the election, that is Thursday, 4th November, 2021, and the election day proper on the 6th of November. 
uh, we have recovered from the series of attacks on our facilities. And I'm happy to say that we have deployed all the non-sensitive materials, not only to Oka, but to all the 21 local government areas. Uh, we have trained the requisite number of ad hoc staff uh, for the election. And we have also mobilized the transport owners for electoral logistics. As far as INEC is concerned, we are good to go on the 6th of November, 2021. So you heard the INEC chairman there about the preparations for the election. For the voters, are they ready? What about the, those who are running for office? About 15 of them who wants to eyeing the number one seat in the state. Two of them are going to be speaking with us tonight on the program. And let's begin by having a conversation with the candidate of the YPP. Senator Ifanyi Uba, he joins us from Inaiwi in Anambra State. Thank you so much, Senator Uba, for joining us tonight. And perhaps a congratulations will be in order uh, after your graduation or your convocation, uh, having a degree now in law. Um, uh, that perhaps will settle the controversy over uh, the issues around the, your certificate, uh, is it? Well, um, well done, uh, Sean. How are you? I'm not I'm hearing not... you very well, but okay, okay. I'm not hearing. Please, can you repeat your question, please? <laughs> I was congratulating you for a successful okay. run at a degree program in law, uh, which you had a convocation. It was all over the social media. Uh, some of your uh, politician friends, you graduated. And you've had this controversy about your education qualification in past elections. But I said now, that perhaps has been laid to rest, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, politics comes with a lot of uh, propaganda. Um, I have no problem. Um, I mean, um, I shouldn't be proud of uh, having um, gone to school at a later age. But uh, determination... Um, I know the steps I have taken in life and, and, and the challenges I've had in life. And at the end of the day, I mean, I, I can only say go, to God be the glory. Uh, it's all over. I mean, I'm going forward. There's no monopoly of wisdom in the world and you can never stop from learning. So knowledge is power. And I'm continuing moving forward. I don't want to look backward. I don't want to look at uh, some um, uh, critics and then... Um, political propaganda, but um, the end justified the means, and we are, we are moving forward. Thank you. So would you say now, with this degree that you own now, uh, you have it in the kitty, would you say you are better prepared to be the governor of Anambra State? Well, uh, being, uh, becoming the governor of Anambra State is something that one desires. That's the minimum requirement of um, academics. Uh, the most important thing is not about academics. Honestly speaking, it's about your understanding of the terrain, your understanding of the problems of your people, and your understanding on how to solve it. Um, govern, government is not a, a governorship a candidate or government is not about one man. It's a collective thing. It's about you understanding how you are going to get people, integrate people, and make um, the necessary change. It's about contentment. You know, when you get in there, how to carry people along, how to blend with people, how to put yourself on the threshold of legacy. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Thank you. If there is one thing, this is your um, accomplishment, this is your education accomplishment as, as thought you, what would that be? Well, it has made me to be uh, a better person uh, before the public. It has also uh, trained me uh, morally, um, going through the four walls of the university is not a joke. So it uh, brings me before um, the, uh, the current affairs, the um, things that I need to know um, about knowledge, especially a uh, law degree. And also, I am also a lawmaker. So you can see combining these two uh, makes me a better person. So in essence, um... In the eye of uh, the voters, the last time you ran for office, and now, I mean, I'm not talking about when you wanted to be senator, 
I'm talking about when you wanted to be governor the last time, and now that you're running for office, has anything changed? Have you told the people that you now have a law degree? Have you told them you have improved yourself? Have you told them that you're better prepared? What are you telling them about your newfound uh, um, achievement, academic achievement? Academics aside, I'm telling them that I understand their problem and I'm contented and I'm going to give them quality leadership. It is not about education. It's about understanding the problem, the peculiar problems of my people, how we can change the face of our state, how we can make Anambra State a mini nation inside a nation. That is what we are trying to do. <laughs> we'll get into the nitty gritty of that in a short while. First and foremost, uh, this is not the first time you've wanted to be a governor of Anambra State. Why do you want to be a governor of Anambra State? Well, Benga, you know, um, I have championed the cause of uh, helping to set so many uh, governors in Nigeria um, through my benevolence, through my foundation. And then I understand uh, the problems of my people, how uh, my people are getting it. I'm not getting it right each and every time we have a, a contest. So I decided to sacrifice myself, you know, leaving my, uh, uh, my uh, you know, affluence, uh, businesses and things, other things. And I want to be here to make sure that I deliver. I want to be part of history. I want to make a legacy, you know. I want to make something that is different. You know, I'm, I'm looking at going through the threshold of so many uh, businessmen that, that come into politics and build a legacy for themselves. And that is the reason why I am in this uh, race. I, don't, I can't say there's something different from what it was in 2013. It's still the same passion. It's, same, it's still the same people. It's still the same desire to give quality, value, education, quality education, secure my state, and then move my state forward. Let us not be on the threshold of beggary state. Let us be on the, on the threshold of people who are determining where the economy of this country is flowing. So if you're saying that, you, are you saying that you have better ideas than the person on the seat or some of your colleagues who are running for office? You're obviously telling us that you're the best candidate for the job. Is that what you're saying? Well, you can see it uh, from the people. Uh, most of the people that are contesting are some of the people that contested during our senatorial contest. And some of them came forth. And some of them um, didn't even contest. So for me, um, going to, to this um, contest, I am the better, I'm the best candidate for it. And uh, a number of people will uh, uh, determine that come 6th of November. Okay, so let's get to know why you think you are the best candidate. First and foremost, let's take a look at your credentials because that is going to be important for the people to choose amongst about 15 of you who are running for this office. What makes you the best candidate in terms of your credential, in terms of your history, in terms of your past, in terms of what you have done for yourself, why should the people of Anambra State vote for you? Well, go to the street of Anambra today. I am the only one that has a known address in Anambra State. When we talk about politician with address, it means the politician that people understand where he comes from, understand what he does for them, and then also that have better understanding of them. I'm a selfless politician and, and the people understand what I can do or capable of doing. Let me give you statistics. Uh, you remember when we had NSAS? I, I'm sure you know that I'm the only politician in Nigeria, not just Anambra State, not just the Southeast, the only politician in the whole country that comforted the, the NSAS uh, protesters. Why do you think I did so if I'm not with my people? How many of them can dare to do what I am doing? Okay, so um, we are not trying to I'm not trying to blackmail or trying to run anybody down, but when the, um, they understand the fact that uh, if you look at also the pedigree of everybody politically, uh, in terms of hierarchy, I am number one before any of them currently. So why wouldn't you think uh, somebody who has a, a grip of several local government already in his city will uh, take, uh, I will emerge the candidate 
And why do you think I won't get it, even when all of them contested same election that I contested just two years ago? And then I came with a very, a very big margin ahead of all of them, giving them 33,000, 30, almost 34,000 uh, 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 margin. I got 87,000, and then the second runner up came up with 52, the other one 51, the third, and the fourth, who is also contesting that, came with 14,000. Is it not the same number of states? If you have the first one, the first one has not uh, uh, crowned. You want this, you have the second one, you want the second one to run? It's not going to be possible. It's not going to be possible. In the, in the senatorial election, that also have a presidential election, and you came forth, now you are coming in and telling the people that you, uh, what kind of magic? Is it not people that will vote? How are you going to manufacture your vote from here or from anywhere? We are here. This is an umbrella state. So when you say that uh, you, are, you are top politically uh, in the ranking amongst your, your peers or those who, whom you're running, your colleagues whom you're running uh, for the office, what do you mean by that? What you can calculate and tell me, if you have a better option, if you have somebody that is more than me currently, then let me know. I, I put it on to you to tell me. No, no, you, under, you understand. You for, for Nigerians to understand what you mean by... Politically, you are above I, them. We want to understand believe, what you mean I, by that. I believe, I, I believe the viewers know what I'm talking about. So if you don't understand it, you can now come out and tell me who your candidate is or who you think is more than me, who is more ranking than me politically, presently, currently. We talk about the I'm, current affair. We are not talking about I'm speaking affair. on behalf of the viewers because the program is to tell them and ask you and for you to explain what you have in store for them. And so that's what I'm asking. So if it's not straightforward, and that's why I'm putting the question what again. Have you but if, when you say that you're you talking politically asked. speaking, in what sense are you talking about? If you can break it down for us to understand well, better. Well we, are, well, we are talking about people. We are talking about our people. What the people, you know, you use a last election to, to put up uh, statistics, yeah, statistics. We are talking about what the people want, whom the people want. You've not asked me of what I want to do for my people. So you are asking me, what do you think? Why do I think? I told, I told you, I am the best candidate. By ranking, I'm number one as well. By elected officers in the state, men. I'm, by, by men, I am second. So why, even if it's, uh, even if it's by uh, God, if, if, after him, I will take the name. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, let's now look at it now, uh, because I would like you for, to tell us uh, a few things about what you plan and your manifesto. I know that you're planning your strategy differently from uh, how you ran for senatorial and how you ran in 2013. In 2013, I think you want only one local government. You want the senatorial election. This time around, what gives you the confidence that you can uh, coast home in this election? Why going, why going to 2014? You need to discuss 2019. There was 2019. So let us start from 2019. 2019, I won five of the local government, five out of seven. You know, so let's go to 2019, uh, Sean. <laughs> that is current. That's address. a senatorial election. This is a, gener this is a statewide yes. election. Uh, you have about 18 uh, local governments no, in uh, Anambra no State. Of the the now. Day. 21 local governments in Anambra no, State. Uh, what gives you the confidence no that not only your senatorial election, because uh, being a senator or someone who wins a senatorial election will make you um, a sectional uh, politician who has control over a section of, of the state. How do you hope to win the entire state in this coming election? Well, you use, um, like our people used to, you use that Wednesday to know how good Friday will be. Um, in the election we had in uh, 2019, senatorial election, it's all about the people of Anambra State. We are one color, we are the same people. So you use the statistics from that point to judge what's going to happen in this. Unfortunately, there was none of the contestants presently in this field that contested with me in 2013. So you cannot use uh, 2013 to to judge what's going to happen. You can use what happened in 2019. The most important thing is our manifesto. The most important thing is what we want to do for our people, you know, how we want to marshal out. And then it's, it's about collective 
efforts, you know, I am going to be the one, you know, the, mandate, the one with the mandate, but it's about, you know, my capability to muzzle and bring in people that will help, you know, to grow the state. And then also the ideas that I'm having, which is different from the ideas they're having. I am giving you ideas from the street perspective and then from what people of Anambra State want, not from what people, people coming from uh, nowhere will come and tell you uh, that, that they want to do. If before you start telling Anambra people this time around that you want to do this and do that, you need to tell them what you have done. So when we get to that one, then I am leading because I'm with them. Okay, so you, you've been a businessman. So let's start from uh, your strength area uh, and we move from there. Uh, economy is very essential. You are, you're from Inewi. Inewi is uh, an economic hub in a number of states. But beyond Inewi, you have Onicha, which is another, uh, there's another economic hub in a number of states. Uh, with the level in which Anambra State is economically, in terms of IGR, in terms of the opportunities and the potentials that the state has. What is your plan, what is your agenda uh, in turning around the economy of Anambra State? Should you become the governor? Well, I said it earlier on, uh, the last time I had an interview with you, Shane, we want to, us, we want to set up what we call uh, uh, an, um, an um, commercially inclined governance where we can work with businessmen and support businesses, especially looking at an umbrella that have close to 70% of Nigerian consumption franchises. So we want to look at that and see how we can partner with this uh, great Anambrians, great businessmen in Anambra State from Anambra origin, and then also help to take away some of this uh, 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 humongous uh, declarations from different banks. We want to create economy that will evolve about supporting our own and then use it and use an umbrella as a template for competitive, for industrialization, for competitive uh, commercial, you know, uh, uh, entity, you know. So we have a very, very strong, that is one of the, our strongest uh, uh, um, uh, line of um, um, how we can uh, increase our IGR and that as well, you know, Touch the lives of our people. So we want to state, we want to make an umbrella state a very a super industrial hub in Nigeria, you know. And then you know we, that is my area of speciality, and that is what I intend to do. We are we are more of commercial people in an umbrella state, and then it's not a joke. It is our own oil and gas, you know. Over seventy percent of franchises in this country belong to my people, our people. So we want to partner with them and see how we can support their businesses and see how many of the businesses that can be domesticated back home in Anambra State so that we can help unemployment in Anambra State. We want to create uh, industrial uh, clusters where we are also going to change narrative you know, for the use by, by inculcating uh, dormitories in the industries. We want, to, we, want to, we want to build a legacy. So I have a name to protect in this state. I have so much uh, investment in this state that will make me to sit in Anambra State and work for the interest of people of Anambra State. And, and, then, and then partner with our great minds, you know, in uh, diaspora so that they can bring in, uh, bring in a lot of um, uh, values to the governance in Anambra State. The most important thing is to state a very transparent and then all encompass uh, governance that will uh, touch the life of our people, home and abroad. Let's take a breather. But when we come back, I would like to ask you, you are from Inewi. Uh, Inewi is known for spare parts. And uh, what we wonder, how you hope that, uh, would I say, charity begins at home. From your home in Inewi, what you will do and how you hope to do it. We go into specifics of your manifesto and agenda for the people of Anambra State. We take a moment, everyone. But when we come back also, our conversation will also be with the SDP candidate, he's a lawyer. Mr. Obina Uzo will be speaking with us after our conversation with Senator Ufanyuba as a battle for the Orca seat of power. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. You know what we do right here. When you're talking about the news, you are right here on the nation's news leader, Channels Television. And when you talk politics, we're the right spot because we lead in politics reportage in the nation. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. And our mandate here at Channel's Television is to give you the best 
of election reporting and politics. And so what we're doing tonight is also to part of our engagement with the candidates who are running for office. And tonight we have two of them. We've been speaking with one of them, Senator Ifan Yoruba. He's a sitting, sitting senator representing Anambra State in the National Assembly and is gunning for the number one seat in Anambra State. And we're asking why, what can he do? Can he do better than will, uh, those who are in office or those who are running alongside of him? Senator, if I knew, but before we went on that break, I was preparing your mind on the next question, which is, in a way, your hometown is known for spear parts marketing and uh, sales. So one will wonder if it has that kind of profile for itself, it turned a lot of people around to, a lot of people know for spear parts selling. It's hidden in the heart of uh, uh, the Southeast, but it has that profile. Have you thought about, because there's a charity be begins at home. So if you are thinking of how you want to change the economics of Anambra State around, what have you thought about your hometown in Ewe? What's your plan? Well, so uh, first and foremost, uh, apologies. Uh, you can't bring Ewe down to only paper cells. Uh, Ewe, please, uh, if, I can, if I have to remind you, is the super hub, industrial hub, um, not only for Anambra State of Southeast and Nigeria. Uh, you don't bring in Newi. Newi is a very uh, industrial town that, um, that can challenge so many states in this country. Uh, you have um, uh, edibles, you have uh, different types of, you have automotive industry. That's true, but not just sales. So I want to correct you on that. So I did not make mistake about that again. So when I said uh, that, Newi, it, I'm talking, I mean, there are, there are cities around the world that are popular for a certain thing do, no, doesn't mean that that's the no, only no, thing no, they no, do. No, no, so no, in no, a no, way, no, no. in the minds of for so many years, I mean, for someone who grew up in the north central part of the country, um, I've known in a way for years, and that's what is popular for. So I'm, I'm asking you for a lot of people who have not been yeah. to in a way before, or who don't know an Amber State, and they've been hearing uh, in a way for what is popular for, not one thing that is known for. And that's why I'm asking you the question. What would, do you want to do with Inewi? I, 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 I can give about 10 different uh, industries that has no relation with automotive papers that are, are championing the, 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 the giant in their areas of species in, their, in Nigeria. But let us look at Inewi. Inewi is known for papers, and then uh, we are the automotive hub of not just Nigeria, of West Africa. This is where, you know, this is number one stop in terms of um, automotive uh, motorcycles, papers. Uh, vehicle, automotive papers, and also automotive assembly plant as well. So um, you are not far from it, but I don't just want to, to not only we are just papers, marketers, and sellers. You know, it has developed, it has blossomed. Here you can have Jolly Jolly, you can have Tommy Tommy noodles, you know, um, bigger, than, uh, uh, bigger than any other noodles industry in the whole country. You know, you have so many things in Newe that is going on for us and... Uh, um, I don't want to name any people to... to, to so, to, yeah, to, so the to, question to, is to that America. those opportunities are, are potentials that are there. What do you plan? Because, they, like I said earlier, it's well, a charity we, begins uh, at home. Well, so if I in a way well, has that kind of potential, uh, let's take it as a sample of the, your plan and your agenda. Do you have it in your what, plan what to turn things around? And how would you do, what, what, do it? What we want to do is to segregate the markets of like, Anambra State. On which I represent the biggest market in West Africa. So, and um, if you look at Onisha, we need to segregate a lot of businesses in Onisha. We don't over, um, overcrowd Onisha. So, we are going to run, uh, first and foremost, have a local government election and then move different products to different local governments. So, that, that product, the product will start generating economy for the same to many in, uh, local governments. And that is one of the areas we are looking at, you know, uh, stabilizing the local government uh, economy by you know, moving so many of that. And then we intend to start bringing in our people back home, creating a business hub and creating business ideas that can enable our people from China, from all over the world to import products what, without- What are these ideas? You know, you've mentioned uh, yeah. clusters yeah. and these Allow hubs. In Allow specific, me. because these are generalized terms that you're using. The people now, that you, want to vote for you want to know in specifics, what exactly are you talking about? How would you do it? Because these are ideas that one can just Google up anywhere and you'll find. 
These are manifestos I that globally you, you, people you, create ops, people you, create uh, clusters. You, but you, how you, would you do it specifically for Anambra people? It, it starts with local government election, which we are going to have in six months. And then it starts with relocating of so many other businesses and government will support businesses to this local government. And then we create what we call local government autonomy. And then if you don't just have local government, don't just, we don't just want local government to be having their money from Abuja. We want also to create industrial clusters in local governments and then create businesses in local government by partitioning so many businesses that are clustered into one areas into this local government. And then we create, show I'm, best, I'm the best guy in this. And you know I can do it. And other people will know what I'm ready to, I'm capable of doing. The most important thing is supporting businesses. It starts from supporting our indigenous traders, our indigenous importers, our indigenous industrialists, and then giving them enough, giving them value for whatever they are doing, and then also give them opportunity to excel in their respective local government and make sure that we distribute wealth in different local governments of Alhambra State. That is one key thing no one has ever done before. No one has ever said before. That is what I want to do. And I don't want to be moved from what I'm saying. Right. So take it. That is what I'm saying. Okay, good. Uh, I would have loved to go into education uh, and how that is important because when you talk about education, Anambra State is also very known for academic excellence for several years now. Why uh, NECO and all of that, and how that can also be uh, uh, be used for uh, the development of the people of the state. But let me go into security because that's a major problem. The IG has, uh, uh, has announced an overhaul of the security architecture within the police rank in Anambra State. But first and foremost, we saw that you uh, you have uh, uh, you've signed up or you stood up. Uh, you came to Abuja. Uh, at the trial of uh, Inamdi Kanu. And there is a major story about the threats on the ground against the election, about the, the security of the election. Uh, what's your relationship uh, in, this re in this respect? Well, my relationship uh, is on um, the fact that uh, he's, a, he's a force to break on with, I mean, uh, you cannot. I have constituency. I have people from my constituency. I understand that they have a lot of sympathy for him. And I am representing a constituency. I cannot have a demand from my constituency and then I will share it away. And I don't have to because I have signed a pact to represent my constituency. So if my constituency wants me to do something, you know, I am doing something humanitarian and as well trying to you know, balance and bring in a, a, profile, a political solution. You know, that is why I am there. And that is why I'm also pleading with the federal government to look into these things and then see how, if really they feel for the people of Southeast, for the people of Anambra State, let us see how we can use the political solution to resolve this issue. And that is why I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. What is the political solution you are talking about? How do you hope to go about it? Is that a solution to the security well, situation well, in Anambra State? Is it at home and all of that? Well, uh, every, even in world -talk countries, every challenges you have that brings in a lot of chaos in, uh, in, uh, in any country, is always resolved in a table, in a round table. There is no way in the world you don't resolve things in a round table. We from the people, we are, we are also lamenting about the lopsidedness in terms of appointment. We are also lamenting about you know how Igbos are being referred in this country. It is something that everybody needs to know. It, you know, it's not, it, it goes beyond me trying to become the governor of Anambra State. So the question is, are we ready? Are we ready? Do we love ourselves in this country? If we love ourselves, let's provide solution, political solution to so many things. Not only in the country, So let's, cla let's the, clarify the, now. The, 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 you people. identified with Inlam Dekanu and IPOB. That is your stand. And that is how you think you can resolve the security situation in your state. Just a quick one before we wrap up. No, security situation in my state has a different method I am going to apply. I am going to apply, you know, information technology, information gathering. This is only state in Nigeria in the next, by the grace of in the next 90 days, if I'm elected into um, um, 
if I'm elected as governor of Anambra State uh, on the 6th of uh, uh, November, I'm going to uh, get, bring in everyone. We are going to look at how we can communicate. Every community, every, every local government will have their own apparatus of walkie-talkie. You know, they can, the, the communication will come easy. Every home that wants to key into... Uh uh, all right, Sen Senator, but we, we're out of town, but the earlier question I asked you that you had, you had, do you identify with IPOP and Inam Dekanu? Is that your stand on that matter? You identify with them? My constituency asked me to go and see how I can provide political situation to issues that surround Inam Dekanu. And for God's sake, I have no apologies. That is what I'm doing. I went to DSS, I met the DG. And he told me to go to the court. I made the right of operation. He told me to go to the court. I did this thing without letting anyone know. And I went to court and I filed to the court to give me access to it. All right. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> We need to leave it at that because uh, we need to switch over to an, yet another candidate that we have on the program. But we must sincerely thank you for your time tonight. Senator Patrick Ufanyuba, the candidate of the YPP in the Anambra governorship election. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's now bring in uh, a lawyer, uh, a philanthropist, and a candidate of the SDP, Dr. Obina Uzo. Thank you so much. Uh, Doc, for joining us tonight on the program. Thank you, Shane. You are running for office too. You think you are the best man for the job? Yeah, I know I'm the best man for the job, and uh, I believe my people know I'm the best man for the job. I'm um, a teacher, a lawyer, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, a farmer, so many things into one. And I've been in the system for over three decades. Uh, I've uh, assisted a lot of people in my philanthropy. I built schools, hostels, uh, uh, churches for all denominations, you know, giving scholarship to a lot of people, done a lot of things to uplift the less privileged. Built houses for people less privileged. A lot of things I've done. It's difficult to be counted. Is so, it because of your philanthropy that uh, you have been knighted in the Catholic Church? Yeah, yeah. before you're knighted, it must be for several other things you've done. Uh, the, the, a lot of the denominations have given me various honors for things I've done across board because my philanthropy knows no bounds. And then the Pope found it worthy, it's almost 10 years now, that the Pope found it worthy to give me the highest honor, the highest award honor that can be given to a Catholic in the world. And, and, that, that, is, is, and that is Knight of St. Gregory the Great. So uh, is that one of the things that you're telling voters, that if Pope had recognized me, I can be the governor? Or what makes you think that you are the best man for the job? Yeah, I, I, uh, I know my people also know I'm the best man for the job because of the things I've done. If I've done this across border, education, uh, agriculture, assistance to so many people, as a person, as an individual, I've not held any public office before and I've achieved this much, giving transformers to people building roads, uh, water boreholes, a lot of infrastructures, a lot of things, sending people on scholarships for over three decades. You can be sure that if I get into government, uh, I can have a wider opportunity to assist more people. Because in life, uh, I was born as a philanthropist, for philanthropy. I started assisting people even from my primary school days, I assist people with the little pocket money I have for their fee, school fees in secondary school, it was same. Uh, in the university, it was same. And um, my people in Anambra know that, uh, uh, know the stuff I am made of. <laughs> so let it not look like, uh, um, but then, yes, it's, it's, it's ideal to mention these things 
I lost my parents on time as a young person, uh, 1982. And uh, I took it off from there, went into business, uh, and then from there went to University of Lagos to study law. And I went to Nigerian law school, called to bar. I'm a senior lawyer, at least over 21 years called at the bar, even though I went as adult education. And a lot of my, 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 my colleagues in the school are with me in this race. A lot of the people I've assisted in life, a lot of people who went through my scholarship are with me in this race. So I'm getting a lot of things All right. you know, free from so because people I've assisted. Philanthropy is a different kettle of fish. We've seen a lot of philanthropies that run for office and the field. Yeah. They may have been successful in philanthropy and private businesses, but running for public office is a different kettle of fish altogether. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll be asking you, Dr. Uzo, on how you hope to govern an Ambra State should your people vote for you in the 21 local government areas. And that's going to be in another 10 or 11 days as we look ahead. We'll take a breather. And when we come back, the SDP candidate with the insignia of us, how far can they run in this race? We'll find out after the break. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Dr. Obina Uzo is the candidate of the SDP in the Anambra governorship election and is here tonight speaking to us about the manifesto of his party and the agenda of Uzo uh, in this race. So, uh, you're talking about your philanthropy. I've allowed you to speak to the people. They wanted to know who you are. Now you've spoken. They know you lost your parents at a very early stage in life. They know how you struggled through school. They know what your achievements are. But what they are concerned with right now is at this moment, who will be the leader or the governor of Anambra State? And if you're going to be the man they, they will vote for, what ideas do you have? What concept are you bringing to the table differently from what we are saying? Let's start with the issue of the economy. What are your ideas to change the economy around? Uh, thank you, Sean, for the question. I can tell you that this is not my first experience. I actually, the first time I ran for governor of Anambra State was in 2003. I ran, I ran against uh, Mr. Pito B, Senator Chris Ngige, Chief George Mogalu, uh, uh, and then former governor Mbadinuju in 2003. So I've uh, come of age in politics and then running for governor for my state. To turn around the economy of my state, I can bet you we have a lot of things on ground. Uh, there are some things my colleagues have not uh, been mentioning, but it's something that is uh, huge for Anambra and for Nigeria as a whole. I want to help my people partner with the federal government of Nigeria and investors to, uh, to complete the Onisha River port. That's going to be a huge assistance to my people and also to the people of the country. What is the economics of that? How much will it cost and what will be generated? What is the, the possible benefit for the people? Yes, I am, I am coming, uh, Jim. You know, a uh, second one is there's an untapped port in Anambra State, Osawa. Seaport is the deepest natural harbor in the whole of Nigeria. Osaka Seaport is in Ihiala, in Ihiala local, local government, government area. I am from Ihiala. It happens to be just at the back of my grandmom's place. That seaport is um, about over 20 meters deep, and uh, it is about 18 nautical miles to the Atlantic Ocean. That seaport, by the time, if by God's grace I get elected as the governor of Anambra State 6 November, and I am sworn in on 17th of March 2022. 17th of March happened to be my birthday. So I'm going to be celebrating the inauguration and the swearing in ceremony. By the time this seaport is uh, uh, actualized, it will be creating over 2 million jobs. 
How? Now, uh, this is direct and indirect. All the, most of the uh, goods from China, from across the world, is coming in straight from the Atlantic Ocean. You know, uh, our Papa Wolf is not connected to the Atlantic Ocean. It's just like a river port. And that's why when it gets to a certain place, it stopped and it's moved, transported by, into, by budgets. But this one is coming straight from China, straight to Osawa, here, because it's connected straight to Atlantic Ocean. So that, by the time, because these things is governance and ideas. If you have big ideas, you get in touch, you, you collaborate with the federal government, with investors, it, 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 it gets more sure. Have you made an assessment of how much it will cost, the cost analysis? Yes, yes. We yeah. have the cost analysis. We've made the analysis of cost analysis for that, for the completion of uh, the Onisha River port. We have all that analysis. It's, it's, uh, it's, in, it's in my... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's in, in our, your manifesto. It's in our manifesto, in our blueprint. How long will it take you, should you be go, I mean, elected, how long will it take you to complete that project? Yeah, as soon as we get in. That's not the only project, but we hope that before three, four years, with the cooperation of the authorities and the investors, we could complete that project in, ever, in, in less than four years. We also have other things. Economy, we have to bring in electricity. You can't do anything without electricity. So we partner with a, a transmission company of Nigeria, uh, with a Enugu distribution company, and uh, various other power, uh, like uh, the, the, uh, the, the current uh, uh, electricity issues you can come on, that can come on board to provide the electricity for my people. Anambra is an industrial How home. do you generate it? You generate through the generating uh, Genkos, that's the generating company. Because the power problem has been on ground. So if you are bringing an idea, yeah. Nigerians want to hear what is different from what you are bringing no, and no. from what we have on the ground. Yeah, you, you, you cannot change uh, unless the policy is... is, uh, is um, There's a law, yeah, a, 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 unless the law, generation transmission. Yeah, so. unless the law is amended. What we have now is that the Genkos generate, the Transiscos transmit, and the Discos distribute. So when you are up and doing, I understand this system, which I have no, I've been into, because we have Goku's Engineering, Goku's Oil and Group, uh, Goku's Oil Services, and all that. So we've been into power since 1987. So if we use our experience and get and partner with these various authorities, we could get more power how to much, my people. Uh, like how many, how, how much more can you get from what you have on the ground? Yeah, based on what you have on ground, you can you can get more. You can uh, well, assume it. That yeah, you are hoping that you could get. Do you have a target? Yeah, when we get we, when we get on board, we will find out what exactly they are generating. So you've now. not found out now. You don't know. We for, have for an sure. idea. Like now, it short. You know, it, it, it fluctuates. Sometimes it's two thousand megawatts. Sometimes it's four thousand megawatts. But you have to negotiate. Discuss, collaborate with right. the authorities so, to ensure that adequate uh, power gets to your people. I want and to... that's not just that. <laughs> okay. Also on small and medium scale enterprises. You know my people are commercial people, businessmen. If you assist a lot of our guys who are already in the marketplace learning how to do this business, and those graduates who are coming out, you try to empower them with some funds to establish their own, like I've done for many youths, many young men, you will have right. lots of millionaires in Anambra. On, on the issue of economy, uh, there is uh, a, um, an assembly plant in Anambra State. Sure. Uh, and people from your state have said that, look, to encourage local uh, assembly plant, there should be policies to ensure that even in the state where it's from, that every vehicle that is used should be bought from that. Do you agree with that kind of school of thought? Completely, completely. So what would you do? Do you have yeah. such a plan? Yes, yes. Not, you know, we have an assembly plant. We encourage more of our people to come establish more. And we patronize, and not just the state patronage. I'll go a step further. 
to discuss, by the grace of God, if I'm elected, my colleagues, and then the federal government to help my people, to help those, because it's not only Anambrarians. Okay. It's not only Anambra only that produce or manufacture or that I know. Would Anambra every state. government official in your government will be buying from locally uh, uh, manufactured? Including or locally? myself, yes. That's all you will do? Sure. All right. On a final, this is where we anchor on the issue of security. Do you identify with IPOP too? Security is a general thing. You cannot, you, you cannot limit it to IPOP. Yeah, what that's is a IPOP? major threat on the ground now. What is IPOP is election. an ideology. Okay. What is the ideology? People are looking at themselves that they are being dis uh, marginalized. Uh, what is due to them is not being gotten. A lot of things. So there is a need. I always like to work on solutions by so going solution? to the root causes. So what's your solution? Find out what the grievances are, dialogue, discuss. You must always come to the round table no matter what. Dialogue, discuss resolve the, the issues, and we make progress. Because why are people talking about Apple? But you know, when people talk about Apple, it's Biafra people are talking about. Because don't forget that you, are, you used to have a Ralph Wazuluke who had Masop. He was also talking Biafra, and people were with him until somehow uh, he, he calmed down, and then uh, my brother Namdekanu got involved. It is the same Biafra our people are talking about. And they are talking about injustices. They are talking about uh, not having enough opportunities like the other regions do. Like we have five states. Yeah. Other regions have six states. Uh, you come to maybe like education. Anambra State has to score maybe 350 over 400 to get, uh, to get uh, admission, while other states probably will score four to get admission. So our people are saying, let there uh, be some element of justice, equity, and fair play so that uh, we, can, we right. can see ourselves. Like now... Uh, We're out of, town, uh, <laughs> out of time, Natalie, <laughs> Dr. Uzo. Uh, and I wish you the very best in the race. You look, look to have some very good ideas, and I wish you the very best. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much for Thank talking. Thank you, Chairman. As the SDP candidate in the governorship election in Anambra State, Dr. Obina Uzo. That's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Okimale. Bye-bye.